Hi everyone, my name is Umu and I'm React to the Case channel creator. Hello everyone, I'm Sean, React to the Case channel ranger and host of Classical Composer Breaks Down the K, and this is Umu's and my reaction to Monster. Red Velvet subunit, Irene and Solgi. I've been seeing all your comments asking where our reaction to Red Velvet Psycho is, and I'm sorry I didn't film a personal reaction to it. I was taking a break from reacting on the channel when Psycho was released, and I'm sorry I didn't make an official announcement or anything. I know a lot of you guys are still confused, and I'm sorry, but sometimes I just need to take breaks from reacting on the channel, because running this channel alone is a lot of mental work and sometimes I just need to take a break from being in front of the camera. So when I do go on hiatus from filming my personal reactions, I do tend to check out the songs when they are released because we have a vetting process to decide whether songs are reacted to on our Classical Musicians React series or not. And so I tend to listen to the songs right away so that I could put my vote in for that vetting process so I can pass it on to the other musicians on our voting panel. And so pinned in the comments section, I have three different playlists that you guys can look into to see what Red Velvet songs are currently being voted on and which ones we won't be reacting to. And hopefully those playlists will answer some of the questions you have of why we haven't reacted to songs or will you be reacting to these songs? So that being said, let's move on to Monster. I have heard the first teaser for this. I'm, you know what's the most amazing thing about Red Velvet is that you just, you never know what's gonna happen next and, and whatever concept or soundscape they change to, they just do incredibly well and the production level is so high. So I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to this. Three, two, one. Whoa! Ooh, that vibrato. Huh. She learned counting from Joy, I see. And now she is right on the beat. Clean. Whoa! Oh. There's a norm. I mean, the ooh in the bass isn't that unusual, but it was also kind of started to granulate the pitches. It's still the Red Velvet song with the unison singing. But the sounds. Ooh. Oh, now we're back to laying back on the beat. I like that was really just sparse and not bright textures and then that really bright growly bass. There's some like baby noises in the track. <laughs> Is there even a pre-chorus in this song? Ooh. Climbing up the scale and then descending into the dance break. And we have. Ah! Ah! There's so many different haunting noises in this track. Okay, I was. Ex I, I'm still guessing the dance break's coming because I feel like that was in a teaser, and we've heard some bass growls in the prose choruses. And I was thinking I was gonna go right into one here, but... No? Okay. And then... Ooh, that sounds... Like a type of flute. Okay, there's more of the full growling. And it kind of pitches down towards the end. And we're ending how we begin with some laughs. Is that a meow sound? Whoa! Bruh, okay, I've never used this term before, but I've seen a lot of other reactors use this term, but that song was deep in the pocket because it was so incredibly hard hitting without being hype 
you know? This song is lit without the generic EDM, you know, drops and stuff. The pre-chorus sounded like, I don't even know if we had a pre-chorus, but we didn't have any typical form lead-ups. And I just love the marriage between the choreography and the sound effects that were sprinkled in throughout the song. Oh yeah, that was, that was, that was great. Let's go through once more. Three, two, one. I love this affected voice at the beginning. It sounds like a child's voice, but the vibrato shows that it was maybe one of them that they affected so much to sound more nasally and childish. I feel like Irene's rapping style feels a little better suited to this than what a lot of her red velvet, like full red velvet raps are. Like, her lower rap sounds, I think, sounds better than a lot of the... I mean, Yeri's definitely the higher voice rapper, but I feel like Irene still tends to be kind of high voice. And now we have harmony in the vocal part. Back to octave. I'm a little monster. They're getting low on the floor when the bass comes in. Wow. Right, so here it's like there's no bass and it's and then lots of sliding between notes. It's not a good job just switching between these very soft bits and and the more and the heavier, harder hitting bits. We have a lot of subdivisions going on in the chorus, which keeps us moving forward because of the verses are so laid back. I'm a little monster. The slide into five on this makes me think of uh, Love Shot. The slide from four to five meaning. I like the violins are possible, well, possibly just synth. Yeah, it's drifting around. Like it's kind of staying around pitches. It's not just a riser, but it's really sort of sliding slowly. So you get these moments where it's really not in tune with the rest because it's moving into the next pitch. And it does a nice bit to destabilize that. I love the move with the synth part. Yeah, and that flute sound. <laughs> Little sprinkles of dubstep. Oh, and this is the second teaser. I realize that's the, the second teaser was the outro, because that has a little uh, high-pitched laugh. And the piano at the very end is so much more muffled and echoey than before. It leaves you with goosebumps! Five minutes later. Okay, well, it's a third lesson, because Um was just starting her second. Three, two, one. The colors in this look really nice. I'm not... I don't know. This will be more interesting when PD reacts to it, and they can talk about how this actually looks the way it does. But like that, there's really good saturation in like the window, stained glass window behind them, and also just like the, all the blues and pinks. I'm a little monster. Yeah, and choreo is still really. Like, it's a good. It's a good choice also, I think, to have it right at the end, so it's like, it stands out. It's like NCT having that slowly spreading out their legs on, I think it's the na 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 I've run out of finger flexibility before I ran out of that musical phrase. Right, but like, that happens once there, I feel like. Um, so it's like, it stands out and it's kind of, it, it makes it a more iconic moment in some ways because it's not just the chorus choreography that happens two or three times. Where to start, man? I thought it was a nice combination of some 
of like moments that or a, a nice contrast between most that would be fairly chill and held back and then these really growly edm bases and like really kept flipping between them too and and but also like some some continuity it wasn't just like it, it wasn't like we've heard some songs where it's just like there are two very different things and it kind of seems like it was just two songs shoved together um but like here it's like they actually blended from one to the other it wasn't just like music type a music type b music type a music type b very true and that's like thanks to like all the background noises that they like spliced up and sprinkled in throughout like we had yeah. the very beginning na, 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 that had just like little bits and pieces yeah. throughout the whole entire song right right and like then we had I... little like creepy baby noises too yeah <laughs> Yeah, 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 the laughs, and then, of course, like, the little interruptions of, like, the dubstep EDM bass, and then, like, we had the trap hi-hat going on throughout, and just, like, it's, yeah, the song in total had a lot of variation in between sections just based on the rhythms that they choose and the way that they sing it, right? So, like, uh, belting versus like quieter and like more sultry on the back of the beat and then like putting more emphasis um, and articulation on the notes so a lot a lot of that energy came from Irene's and Salgi's vocal parts. Yeah and they did a good job contrasting I feel like it, there wasn't a strict correlation but I feel like Irene tended to get some of the like sparser lighter textures and Salgi tended to get some of the heavier ones which I think makes sense like Irene's voice is often a little bit toward the breathier side, where Sorugi's is often toward the a little bit harder edged side. Right. Um, and although I, I also liked, I felt like the sort of vocals Irene got to do in this song suited her well. Yeah. Like, I felt like her, it, like, Yeri's definitely the highest voice rapper in the group, but I feel like Irene's rapping in, like, full Red Velvet songs still tends to be a little bit high- and sometimes slightly, it's, it's, she's naturally a little bit breathy, but like a little bit higher. And I felt like she got to rap lower here. And I mm -hmm. think it suited her voice better. Uh, oh, yeah. I was I was really impressed by that because we, you know, we've seen um, Red Velvet in so many different ways. But this, this one was yet another doorway to the many concepts they can pull off so well. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like this is sort of them taking advantage of it being a subunit where it's like, it's not... It's not really particularly red or velvet. Um, mm. Like it's, I mean, it's it's clearly not red. So sometimes, pretty much everything that isn't clearly red, people throw into being velvet. Um, but it's like it, velvet. Velvet's much more about like chord extensions and softer textures. I feel like, <laughs> yeah, it's like EDM basses not really part of a velvet sound. But I thought it worked well. So yeah. yeah, I like that. The chorus, the core, I guess actually no, the post chorus made me think a little bit of EXO's Love Shot. Just because it. Da, na, na, da, na. Da. Yeah. Na, yeah. Na, 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 na. So I, I thought of that. And also I feel like, even strictly like that, the intro of the song had the. Uh, uh, da, da, da. Um, but like filtered even more heavily than usual filter or process or whatever. And I think Exo's Love Shot also starts with like a low past. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I felt like maybe the composers were thinking a little bit of of that song and how they set it up. And then they sprinkled some shiny everybody in <laughs> at the very yeah. end. <laughs> yeah. Overall, it was just a marriage of what, like, a wonderful soundscape, and I can't wait to see, like, all the, the, I know there's, like, a lot of theories going around for what this music video is inspired by, and, like, it was, like, um, what was it, like, Vampire Girlfriends or something, or, I, I don't know, I saw something on Twitter. That okay, really yeah, I don't know, I don't, I mean, clearly leaning toward, I mean, clearly leaning fairly romantic with them, like, that was... I mean, that's clearly how it's set up. I'm not trying to say whether Sir Green is, like, actually a ship, but, like, it's clearly... 
it's clearly being presented that way in the video. It's beautiful. Um, and I love just the like, outfits. I love everything. <laughs> yeah, no, like this, they really did, like, Ezra really did a good job producing the video. Yeah. And now we're going to be moving on to listening to the album. I've heard that there's a lot of Velvety songs, and I'm looking forward to the Moonshine and the Andreas Obrick songs because we've liked a lot of their stuff in the past. So we'll see you guys then. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.